everyone. What you've all been waiting for is us to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse. And you might be thinking, wow, Demon Mama, you sure chose a long time to wait to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse. And the answer as to why I haven't talked about Kyle Rittenhouse basically at all since Kenosha uh, actually happened and, and the shootings, the, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse uh, fueled shootings um, happened is because who gives a shit? That's, that's the real answer. The real answer is why the fuck does anyone give a shit about Kyle Rittenhouse? And the answer is, well, I have the answer. And I'm going to tell you the answer over the course of this segment. Now, you might go, oh my God, but it's a high profile court case. How can you say that it doesn't fucking matter and that it's a waste of everyone's time? And the answer is, well, because it is. There are all kinds of other more important cases going on that you could be following, that Twitch politics could be following. For example, they could be talking about the Ahmad or Arbery case, a case in which two uh, fucking uh, highly, highly uh, white supremacist guys uh, chased down and killed an innocent man. Um, and uh, yeah, um, and, and yet no one's talking about Ahmad Arbery right now, which is a little bit interesting. And, uh, I mean, there's they could be talking about Alex Jones, another interesting court case that's going on. But, no, we're fixated on Kyle Rittenhouse. And I have to wonder, why? And the answer comes down to, well, personal drama. Let's just be real. We all know what happened in the Twitch space around Kyle Rittenhouse, don't we? We know what happened. Everybody knows why Kyle Rittenhouse became a hot-button issue in the Twitch and YouTube politics space. But if we're completely honest, it isn't just the Twitch and YouTube politics space that's obsessed with Kyle Rittenhouse. Do you want to know who else is obsessed with Kyle Rittenhouse? The far right. And it's very interesting because the far right seems very invested in basically framing Kyle Rittenhouse as some kind of vigilante hero who's been done, done bad by the media and done bad by the communist Democrats and is a perfect example of how BLM has gone too far. And as we all know, as with all things the right, the, the right in America decides to talk about, it's all bullshit. Um, Kyle Rittenhouse and the discourse around Kyle Rittenhouse is basically a rehash of the Mr. Potato Head drama. And, and you might think, well, wait a minute, but Mr. Potato Head didn't have any real world effects. It had about as much real, well, okay, it didn't have as much real world effect as Kyle Rittenhouse. But for the vast majority of people who've been commenting on the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, the Mr. Potato Head situation has the same material impact on their lives as Kyle Rittenhouse. And yet everybody's fixated on Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse. Oh my God, Rittenhouse. Did you hear the Rittenhouse take? Oh my God, are you going to drop a Rittenhouse take? Do you know how many goddamn times I've been pinged while sick over, wow, when are you going to talk about Rittenhouse? Are you going to cope and see about Rittenhouse? And the reality is, go watch my channel. When was the fucking last time I talked about Kyle Rittenhouse? I think the last time I talked about Kyle Rittenhouse was literally when the shootings happened. Uh, but basically, uh, there's this thing going on on Twitter where if you don't talk about Rittenhouse, it must be because you're a coping and seething liberal or because you got totally owned in um, because you were uh, you believed in submitting to the mob or some other uh, projected nonsense that the uh, the the, the br brain souped sock dems on twitter decide to cough out every single day would his trial be a precedent case in u.s law no not even close not even motherfucking close that's the thing this isn't even an impactful law case this is a basically the way the case is boiling down is deciding whether or not it's a self-defense case that the context has made it uh, a hot button issue but the reality is the actual case itself is is going to boil down to self-defense. Only if it goes to the Supreme Court. Guys, there's no there's like zero chance that Kyle Rittenhouse's case is going to go to the Supreme Court. You were worried about the precedent? What precedent? We live in America. In America, you can basically blow away anyone with a gun, and as long as they die and you don't, you're going you're going to be fine.
Like, I don't know how to explain American self-defense law to you. You know that we have states that have the castle doctrine, the stand your ground laws, which basically mean that you have, if you even think that somebody is threatening you, you can just pull out a fucking uh, laser gun and burn them down till they're just two smoking sneakers on the ground. And you would be still, you would still be cleared by a court of law in the United States. There is no way that this is going to go anywhere. And, 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 the oh yeah the only reason this case is prominent is because of c culture war soup brained idiots who don't know how to focus on anything and just go oh my god joe biden is a communist he he said he tweeted a video once that had two frames of kyle rittenhouse in it and he said the word white supremacy in association with the video that had two seconds of kyle rittenhouse's face on it and that means that joe biden is secretly trying to corrupt the youth it's the dumbest shit in the entire world castle doctrine is supposed to say limited to one's dwelling yes but i'm i'm talking about both of these you know it's very interesting okay and there's also a huge double standard in the united states do you want to know people who tend to you want to know who tends to go to prison uh on you know despite acting in self-defense black people that's who that in america that's who because our system is ridiculously racist and the, the laws around self-defense are so broad that they're basically designed to cater to the desires of gun-toting boomers who who don't first of all don't know, know how to fire at all but who blow down them them like, who blow down their own family member their front door and the person and the pizza delivery guy who was knocking because they forgot that they had ordered the pizza and then they thought their house was getting robbed America has the most ridiculous self-defense laws that you can possibly imagine, and they vary from state to state. And Wisconsin is one of those that has very, very, very open self-defense laws. My favorite, my favorite line is that libs wanting Kyle to get prison raped is going to push the culture war further right. There's so much brain soup on both sides. That's all that I learned over the past week. What you should have learned by watching the Kyle Rittenhouse drama unfold on uh, Twitter is that nobody knows what they're talking about and everyone is basically as obsessed with uh idiotic culture war issues as conservatives are about uh you know mr potato head's uh questionable genitalia you know um it, it's funny because basically every single conservative that i saw was like whoa, 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 leftists coping and seething and then the vast majority of leftists i know don't give a fucking shit about this it's all libs and it's all republicans it's blue check libs and blue check republicans and they're posturing over a case that has basically no impact on the vast majority of the country paul m says i think at least one of the differences with rittenhouse is since he killed people libs get to stoke moral outrage versus only the right doing that i mean but even that is questionable right and has backfired now <clears throat> let's talk about some of the let's talk about some of the details okay because i know that everybody here was hoping that when i was going to talk about rittenhouse that i was going to go into some like uh like true crime gonna do a drama mama uh investigation and hash out the uh the the, the uh the, you know the details and we we're gonna watch the video and try to analyze the pixels fuck that shit absolutely not what a waste of everyone's time not gonna happen i don't give a shit and the reason why I don't give a shit is because, at least from my perspective, from what I care about, this is a completely inconsequential case. It sucks that people died. It sucks that there was a shooting. It sucks that this all happened in the middle of a huge civil rights struggle. But none of it actually impacts any of those things. Kyle Rittenhouse's decision is not going to majorly affect the law. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's decision is not going to majorly affect civil rights advocacy in the United States. All that it's going to do is going to give a bunch of conservatives a a a a hit of the of what we call the copium. You know, we have an emote. You know, the the copium emote. The same thing they were doing on the sixth when they were like, "Look, this is the, the, this is proof that the patriots are rising up." Oh, oh get lit, get on lips. All of that shit, that is all that Rittenhouse is. It is a giant huff of copium from, from right-wingers who think that they've made some sort of serious hit against the left by being the most heinous and obnoxious people on the internet for the past year. 
every single vaguely right-leaning person has been the most insufferable piece of shit about Kyle Rittenhouse for the last year because the simple fact is they worship him like a hero. Even though they will regularly argue, he was just a kid, he's just a dumb kid, he didn't know what he was doing. They worship him like a hero. Isn't that weird? Isn't it weird how two-faced it is? How on one hand, they're like, oh God, poor Rittenhouse. He's crying, he's traumatized, oh! And then on the other hand, they're like, yeah, beast Rittenhouse, beast Rittenhouse, be oh yeah, he's teaching those libs, keep those fucking Antifa in place. Even though the fact that none of the people involved were even BLM, like one of the person, one of the people involved was a fucking medic and the other one wasn't even a BLM protester. He was just somebody who happened to be on the streets and freaked out about the gun. It is the dumbest shit that you can... Why does this keep falling? That's so fucking annoying. It is the dumbest shit that you can possibly imagine. Rittenhouse getting off scot-free will only embolden more psycho far-right people. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, you could... That That's an argument. You could say uh, Rittenhouse getting off scot-free will only embolden more psycho far-right people. But the reality is they're already emboldened. They know that these laws exist. Why do you think they bring guns to protests? Fucking far-right psychos in America, they already know that they can run people over with their car, that they can blow people away without any, without basically any repercussions. I love how they forgive his emotional outbursts because he's a hero while they pressure the people they don't like into suicide. Well, yeah, that's how they do. They're fucking, um, they're, they're fucking, uh, hypocrites. Yeah. Windleby says, right-wing people fantasize about running protesters over, bringing guns to anti-American protests and blow people away all the time. It's such a goddamn meme. Yeah, it's literally a meme. It's a fucking meme with them. They're... Listen, Kyle Rittenhouse's ability to um, inspire people has nothing to do with, his de with the decision in the courts. Do you think that, like, look, they were emboldened the moment it happened. The moment Kyle Rittenhouse blasted uh, two people, three people away, two people away, three people, I always forget. Um, uh, the moment that he did that, the right was already emboldened. The actual, the actual case doesn't fucking matter. They don't give a shit. Now, there may be a, a, a short outburst of violence, but they don't care. Guys, remember, January 6th happened fucking regardless of the court cases about around Derek Chauvin or Kyle Rittenhouse. Even Derek Chauvin, a much more impactful case, didn't affect the fact that January 6th happened. The right is already emboldened. They already know that they can get away with almost anything. There are already states that are passing laws that make it easier to get away with hitting protesters with your car. Like, Texas is aiming to make it easier to hit people with your car. The right has no shame. They don't care about the law. So let's talk about uh, some other things. Um, let's talk about some other things, okay? Because uh, I want to talk a little more about Rittenhouse, okay, guys? What is my opinion, okay? What's my opinion on the whole thing? Because I've already given you my general opinion on the discourse. But what's my opinion on the actual case? To me, it seems pretty straightforward. This is a, a kid, a minor, who was super, super gung-ho and involved in hyper pro-cop, hyper right-wing groups. He was there with a right-wing group. Uh, he hangs out with and has become a hero to right-wing groups. He's been pictured posing and making little okay signs with right-wing groups this is pretty clearly an example of a kid who was encouraged and allowed to go into the into a far-right pipeline leading him to make the decision to go and defend a community and i don't really care if it's his community or not his community um i think it's kind of bullshit i think it's kind of a stretch obviously he's familiar with the place but like come on it's not like his house is there or his business is there um he went there because he was living up a fantasy, a fantasy that has been peddled by far right people for all of American history. Just so you know, the we need to defend our um, our our communities from these degenerate civil rights protesters and these degenerate civil rights rioters is a tale as old as time. The 
protecting our neighborhoods, protecting our communities by forming militia, like unaccountable militias is, is, is the right's wheelhouse. It always has been. Why do you think that right-wing militias have been a thing for the entire fucking history of, 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 of America, of, of the country of America? Okay. Kyle was asked why he used an AR-15. One, because he wasn't allowed to have a pistol. And two, because the AR-15 looked cool. Yes. Kyle, a few weeks ago, before the in a few weeks before the incident, was looking at protesters and said he wished to have his AR-15 so he could shoot them. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, I've heard him talking about that, which is stupid kid things. This is why you don't give kids guns, okay? You know, I know this might sound like a hot take, but, you know, kids sh probably shouldn't be heavily armed because they're idiots. They're especially... <laughs> especially right-wing white teenagers who run around th like in pro-cop groups fantasizing about being the lone wolf who saves the world from the degenerate lefties come on like like wow <laughs> reads foucault also arms uh, argues against arming children uh, listen uh, as far as i know foucault did not advocate for arming children <laughs> I can think of precisely one situation in which arming children is okay. And that is in the bachelor's path through pathologic one. Okay. In the bachelor's path in pathologic one, there is a juncture in which you can choose to give firearms to children because the literal military is going, is threatening to burn down a building that bunches of kids are in. And in that particular circumstance, I think I can justify arming children. And unless we're in that particular circumstance, which none of us are, then I don't support arming children. Okay? Okay? Okay, also if they're near Matt Gates. If if I, I support arming children if they're near Matt Gates. Yes, yes. Matt Gates or Matt Walsh. Basically any conservative named Matt, you're allowed to arm children, okay? What about arming maladjusted lesbian artists? Now that now that I would I can get behind. Now that I can get behind. So Rittenhouse is a, a stupid child uh, who has now been subjected to a, a, a media cycle and court process that makes no sense, that has no impact, and is mostly just Republican spectacle so they can further lionize him and make him feel like a hero so that they can convince other children that it's good to be a lone wolf armed person who goes to protests. But in the but in the process of this idiotic discussion, sorry, sorry, let's not get off on that yet. I'll go back into this in a second. This trial is going to boil down to legal minutia, okay? And I don't know about you, but most of the time I don't give a fucking shit uh, about legal minutia. The, like guys we live in a country where you can where you can find like all kinds of legal ways to get away with doing a crime and guess what that's fine because i think our justice system is in fucking shambles okay in like ways that are way bigger than rittenhouse rittenhouse is not the example of the justice system being bad that you are looking for these are not the droids that you're looking for so to say America is a country in which cops regularly get off in, while being on video fucking murdering people. Like, all the goddamn time. America is a country where, um, where the best defense in the entire world is to just never say anything at all. Y'all ever seen Shut the Fuck Up Fridays? Can we watch, can we watch fucking Shut the Fuck Up Fridays real quick? I think it's a good idea for us to watch Shut the Fuck Up Fridays. Pay close attention, imps. It's Shut the Fuck Up Friday. It's Monday, but it's Shut the Fuck Up Friday. Because every day is Shut the Fuck Up Friday. Now listen closely, because this is two lawyers going to tell you what to do if you ever get talked to by a cop. <coughs> Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. We've been warning people, if you are working for an unlicensed dispensary, an illegal dispensary, and it gets raided, you need to shut the fuck up. If you shut the fuck up, you have a good, good chance that we can make the case go away. Case in point, three employees of an illegal shop were busted during a raid. Two of them said, oh, I'm just volunteering here. The third guy shut the fuck up 
and the DA did not prosecute the guy who shut the fuck up. They can't prove what you were doing there if you're a customer, patient, walked in to go to the bathroom. They don't know. You got to shut the fuck up, and it's shut the fuck up Friday. So review the script. What do you say when the cop first pulls you over? Why'd you pull me over? And when he keeps asking questions? I'm not discussing my day. And they ask more questions? Am I being detained or am I free to go? And if detained, what do you say? I invoke the fifth. And then what do you do? You shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up Friday. Never answer questions when the cops ask. Have safe holidays. Tip of the day. Now, back to Rittenhouse. So, Rittenhouse is a stupid case, uh, and you're, everybody's wasting their time by hyperfixating on it. We always knew there was a good chance he was going to walk because of the way that, that self-defense laws go. And the conversation around Rittenhouse previous to now has mostly been about the morality of the situation, which I think is a much more interesting question. You know what I mean? Um, we're talking about um, a, a literal his, historical civil rights protests, some of which evolved into rioting. Um, rioting, which is a questionably defined term, by the way. That's another thing you should know. Um, and we're going to get into this in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> we're going to jump. We're going to jump into the the deets of this in a minute. Okay. Um, but what I want to talk about first is uh, is uh, is the context. Okay. So the context was uh, after the uh, Jacob Blake shooting, in which Jacob Blake was shot in the in the back at very close range seven times. Um, hospitalized and is now paralyzed as far as I know, or at least partially paralyzed, uh, he lived. Um, now, after that shooting, there was a lot, there was a lot of understandable outrage, a highly televised, um, uh, very brutal police shooting uh, in a country right in the wake of George Floyd, right in the wake of all of the other BLM protests. And so protests exploded in, K in Kenosha, and some of them turned into riots. Now, again, uh, riot is a very legally questionably defined term, you see, because what defines a riot is whether or not basically the police call it a riot. You see, um, no one else gets to really make that. I think a judge in some places, the judges have to make the call. Like if you're going to declare a riot, it has to be a judge that makes the call as to whether it's a riot or not. But it's left up to the to the judgment of some random fucko, one judge or one police chief who makes that call and says, we are declaring this a riot. So riots are a really questionable term. Lots of protests are suddenly called riots. There were peaceful protests all across Seattle that got declared riots for incredible bullshit reasons, many of which didn't hold up in court. And in fact, um, if you go and look at some of these things, even in the case of Rittenhouse, there is a fuckload of questionable uh shit about the declaration of the riot the declaration of the curfew it was literally i was watching some of the news this morning and they were taught and the judge had to bring up wait well there's some questions about the legitimacy of the curfew there are some questions about the legitimacy of the riot of the de declaration of it being a riot now let's talk about some of the other things that really annoyed me about this kyle rittenhouse thing everybody's favorite kyle rittenhouse simp on twitter uh, the former, uh, uh, the former streamer, uh, one, who is now an NFT salesman, um, and many, 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 many others have been dropping all kinds of weird, interesting propaganda in their defense, in their defenses and their, uh, their lionizing of Rittenhouse. And of course, we've all seen the memes, but one of the ones I've heard multiple times, because believe it or not, I do torture myself by watching, uh, stuff that I don't really care that much about because this is the community that I'm a part of. So I keep an eye on it anyway. And the reality is I've seen a lot of people dropping weird takes about protests, talking about, oh yeah, he was going there because there were protests there, which means because of a protest, you have a reasonable understanding to go to somewhere armed, which is an interesting thing because protest is literally the foundation of the constitution. You realize the, the, Fucking Declaration of Independence was an act of protest. The revolution was a violent act of protest. Protest is not only protected by the First Amendment, but protest is a right granted to you by the foundation of this country's legal code. So there's this weird thing. It's it's always very interesting to me, you know, um, how people talk about protests, 
how protests are criminalized from the get-go. People say, oh, there's a protest here. Oh, they were protesting. They were out there. And sometimes they mix up the word riot and protest because that's very convenient, you know, because the word riot is very scary. You know, you hear riot and you go, ooh, that's the bad one. Oh, and then you never actually ask, well, what is a riot? What, do, what, what determines the difference between a riot and a protest? Is it the intensity of the protesters? Is there violence? Well, guess what? Nobody knows because riot is just a word that people use. It's another word that people use interchangeably with protest. But guess what? You have a right to protest. Every American has a right to protest. And I'd go further to say that protest is a moral right that transcends the right of states. A state cannot legitimately tell you you do not have a, a right to have your voice heard. If they are doing that, that is what we call tyranny. That is what we call legitimate tyranny. You have a right to make your voice heard by the, uh, uh, by the authority that has placed itself over you. And if not, fuck that authority. Do you see? Do you see where I'm getting with this? And I've heard this a lot, by the way. I've heard this weird criminalizing rhetoric that talks about protest as if protest is a bad thing that should never happen. I've even heard lefties unintentionally ceding ground and saying, well, yeah, but the protest, uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, I know there were some, and I've heard some really staunch lefties go, well, yeah, you know, what about this? What about the 7% of, of protests that turned violent? You know that like, out of that 7%, a whole bunch of those were in my town, and I've watched personally the footage, and I've watched the cops be the ones who initiated violence with my own fucking eyes, and you can too. You don't believe me? Go watch the footage. You can search it right now on Google. If you don't believe me, go watch it yourself. Go watch the footage of how the riot declarations were handled in Seattle and you will see the cops were the ones who started violence. People standing there with fucking umbrellas got hit in the head with fucking batons. And then after the baton hits went out, they justified firing flashbangs and tear gas into tightly packed crowds, which were tightly packed by actions of the police. The police de declared a fucking uh, declared a riot, declared a curfew that was five minutes after the declaration when they already had a crowd of thousands of people in front of them. Tell me, how are thousands of people supposed to leave a location in five minutes before the tear gas starts rolling out? Huh? Interesting. They're not. But the cops are legally allowed to set a curfew five minutes away from when thousands of people have shown up to, to use their constitutional right to protest. Isn't that interesting how that works? Isn't it, isn't it fucking fascinating how manipulative, how much manufactured motherfucking consent has gone on around this entire conversation? And a lot of you don't know this. The vast majority of you never watched my show back when I did riot coverage, back when I did protest coverage, back when I did the BLM uprising coverage. Some of you remember my days back then when every day I would update on what actually happened, where I was spending all of my off time freaking out and watching. And I literally had a police scanner here and I was listening to the stuff going around in my low fuck, my fucking location. Gayfesh says, I remember getting a notice on my phone at 5.03 p.m. one day saying curfew has been declared for 5 p.m. Me too, because we live in the same area. I remember that as well. I also remember walking out to my front porch and warning my neighbors that they were about to go get fast food after a, a curfew had been declared and that they would be pulled over for, in violation of curfew. I remember that. Does anyone else? No, because everyone else on the internet has a memory of a fucking goldfish. How did I get a police scanner? They're available online. There are all kinds of services that allow you to listen in. Police scanners have to be, uh, there's a whole bunch of rules about it, but there are all kinds of legal police scanners you can listen to online. Just search it. The video of the old man getting beaten to the ground is genuinely horrifying. What about the video of the Seattle cop de deliberately running over the head of a protester with his bike? Do you guys see that? Where he looks down and he's off his bike and he gets on his bike and then pedals and runs his bike wheel over the head of a protester who's already fallen to the ground. Yeah, I remember that too, everybody. 
I remember what was going on around this. So while all of these stupid crypto right, uh, right wingers and crypto right wingers are going around on Twitter telling you all their stupid asinine takes about Kyle Rittenhouse, just remember that they didn't say shit during the BLM uprising. They didn't say shit when cops initiated multiple nights of violence that on video that is archived and documented not only on my channel, but also on a hundred other channels. You don't believe me? There's an, there's this cool channel called uh, Unicorn Riot. You ever heard about Unicorn Riot? They've got an entire archive of all of their coverage of every single BLM protest they went to where you can watch as they, a very well-marked member of the media, get to the front lines and get shot at during a peaceful protest. Yeah, interesting how that works, huh? Interesting how that fucking works. And then you have all these fucking housebound posers like NF Steve going on fucking uh on fucking Twitch and saying things like oh yeah these fucking you don't think you're going to defend your town when there's a fucking riot coming into town you don't think you're going to be nah, nah, nah. this is bullshit what this is is called poisoning the well it's it's a, actually that's not even the right term the term is propaganda poisoning the well is not the right term here it's propaganda it's saying, yeah, let's equate protests with violence and that way that everyone has in their mind this passive idea that protest is bad. When in reality, protest is, if you're going to be one of those people and say, oh, American, American values, American values, blah, 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 the, the oldest American value is the right to protest. And of course, in, in, uh, you know, in, um, in accordance with that, also the American state's right to deny you your right to protest, which was how the United States government was founded in the first place. But we'll just, we'll just pretend, you know, we'll just set that one aside. Yeah. There's, and it's not just, it's not just the NFT salesman either. It's a bunch of other people. I've seen a fuckload of people all over Twitter, even people I respect, unintentionally demonizing and criminalizing the idea of protest, which in my opinion, in a country where the National Guard was de was was deployed to defend the cops, that let's make no mistake, that's what it was about. These were protests about injustice, about corruption. They were about the cops being used as a violent arm to oppress minorities. That's what these protests were all about all across the country. The, the biggest civil rights uprising in the history of America. And you have a bunch of people who are trying to use the, the topic of Rittenhouse to demonize protest. That's what I call bullshit, everybody. Don't be a fucking dupe. Don't be a goddamn dupe, okay? Yeah, it's very telling. Yeah, exactly, A-Pillow. It's super te telling that people who were a part of the Tea Party just a couple years ago now shit on peaceful protest movements. VM Draco, it would matter if we were only talking about legality, but we're not. I believe that humans all over the planet have a right to resist undue authority being placed on them. I believe that is a human moral right, okay? I believe that humans have the right to resist any, any authority that they believe is unjustly placed over them. I just believe humans have that right. Do you guys remember when they were doing on the street cavity searches of people in Portland? Anybody remember that? I remember that. I remember when they were pulling random people who were out on the night of protest. I remember when uh, a fucking streamer I was watching who was marked as media and had a media badge from an or from a recognized media organization was asked to the side and the cops were trying to demand that they let him do a cavity search. Yup. I remember that. Natalie Marie says, I'm so glad I got out of that right-wing YouTube pipeline. I remember watching slightly offensive channel covering a Proud Boys versus Antifa clash in Portland and being scared to leave my house because I live blocks away from the protest. So happy to have found this space. Yeah, it's funny. It's interesting that, uh, you know, you don't have anything. You have literally nothing to fear from a... Uh, first of all, Antifa isn't the organization that right-wingers make it out to be. But secondly, it turns out a group that's devoted to fighting fascists, you don't really have much of a much to fear if you're not actively running in a fucking fascist gang like the Proud Boys. The fuck? Isn't that fucking illegal? Yeah, here's the secret. Illegal shit happens all the time, and cops, 
Cops are above the law. Do you, do you, do you not understand that? In America, cops are above the law. And you got to act like that. The legal system is not your fucking friend. You, you should, you should think, you should recognize that a country in which we have the, one of the highest, in fact, I think we have the highest per capita prison population has a justice system that is not the friends of anybody who isn't a member of the, of the, uh, social classes, uh, that, that are, uh, that are favored by those organizations. That means if you're not rich, the cops and the justice system aren't doing you any favors ever. We just have the, 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 the highest flat out Jesus fucking Christ. That's horrifying to think about in a country, supposedly the best country to live in on earth, the, the cutting edge of, of capitalist accomplishment. We have the highest prison population in the world. Insane. You should understand by now the carceral state, the cops, the justice system is not your fucking friend. They do illegal shit all the goddamn time and they don't get caught for it because they're the ones who decide what's illegal and what's not. Understand? Do you, do you, do you get this? Land of the free. You want to know what another interesting little side effect of everything becoming private property is? You want to know what an interesting side effect of the removal of public space is? It becomes really, really hard to protest. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that as, as private corporations scoop up public land and lobby to have uh, public land be pr protected as if it's private land, that all of a sudden your ability to say anything against the, the people making the rules that you have to follow else you get locked in a concrete box for the rest of your life that they make it basically impossible to say anything against them? Damn, that seems pretty manipulative, doesn't it? That sounds pretty fucking bad, doesn't it? Almost sounds like we live in a horrific dystopia. Almost sounds like we are already careening towards a ju Judge Dredd future. Interesting, huh? Yeah, but only bad people go in prison, everybody. Only bad people. The U.S. prison population is half of Norway's entire population. Isn't that sickening? Isn't that fucking disgusting? You guys, Americans don't realize how bad it is here. Americans really don't. I've traveled outside of this country. Americans don't realize how fucked it is here. Yeah, corpos run this co this country. Yes, they do. Get used to it. Wake the fuck up, everybody. I'm sorry to pull that line. I'm sorry to be the one. I'm sorry to be like, wake up, everybody. You gotta wake up. The goblins are fucking running wild. But if if you might pardon me being a little bit of a of a fucking sandwich sign prophet for just one second here, I would really love it if you could take a second to realize that you live in a fucking dystopia already. Rittenhouse doesn't affect that fact at all. This is why the Rittenhouse trial is a giant waste of everyone's time. Why uh, I'm th I'm talking about it only in the most broadest sense. Because the, the trial itself is fucking meaningless. The only thing that matters is the, the indication of how the fever pitch around Rittenhouse is influencing the direction of the right wing in our country. That is literally all that matters about this trial. And what we're seeing is that the right thinks that this is a perfect win for them, that they're going to be able to just, if they don't like you, they want to get away with killing you because that's their worldview. <sighs> Do you agree that we shouldn't root for Kyle to be convicted because it just pushes more fascist violence on, on incarcerated people? I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care what you think about. If you think it's cool that Rittenhouse gets locked up, whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I think that Kyle Rittenhouse is basically fucked at this point because this guy is going to be a hero to the right. This guy's going to this guy is so jammed down the far right pipeline. There's there's going to be no getting out for this guy. Part of that is the fault of liberals. The take on Rittenhouse crying. Guess what, guys? Crying in court is a surefire strategy to benefit your case. Every single person who thinks they might go to prison is going to cry if they think it will make sure that they don't go to prison. I think that he looked really cringy. And I thought a lot of the memes about him crying were kind of funny. 
The memes I didn't think were funny, by the way, and I am going to take a little bit of time. This was all liberals, by the way. I didn't see anybody outside of liberals making jokes about the prison rape shit. But the prison rape shit, that shit is so cringe. That shit is so fucking cringe. I disown you if you ever made a joke about that. I disown you. <sighs> Fuck that shit. Prison rape is not fucking funny. Don't fucking joke about that shit. But as always, it's fucking libs. It's always fucking libs. It's fucking always libs, isn't it? Well, no, no rape is funny, okay? I saw the only people I saw making jokes like that were fucking blue checks. And they were making them and getting roasted by, by Republican blue checks. It was liberal blue checks versus Republican blue checks. Let I don't fucking give a shit. None of that li matters to me at all. That fucking shit is cringe. I don't fucking care. Uh, and likewise, I don't care if you think it's funny. Like, look, hold on. There's a really funny meme. Hold on. I've got this funny meme that was sent to me. And it was, uh, it was fucking sick. Uh, let me just, let me just get the joke here. I, I posted it earlier because it's so funny. Hold on. Let me bring this up and I'll show you the meme. And then you guys can laugh at it because this is, this is, in my opinion, a fucking hilarious meme. Okay? Fucking great meme. Absolutely hilarious. This meme, super funny. Not a rape joke either. It's a joke about, just so you know, this is a, uh, a butt plug, a Bluetooth vibrating butt plug app that allows you to give your dom control over the butt plug that's in your butt. And the joke is that somebody is sitting at home and activating the vibrator and that's what makes his face. This is the best joke. This is the funniest joke of all. I just explained it to you, so it's not funny anymore, but that's what this is. This is a very well-known Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth BDSM uh, vibrator app. Just so you know. Now, that joke's funny, in my opinion. Oh, the mukbang meme one is also good. That one was made by High Progressive, I think. Let me see. Look at that. This is the Kyle Rittenhouse mukbang meme. You know, because of the mukbang streamer that, that always cries when there's food. 